These are the 170 plus goaltenders who played more than 20 games since 2007, ranked by goals saved above expected. Some of these goalies had careers that started before this stat was tracked, so the picture painted of them is unflattering and inaccurate. But some of them are absolutely bang on. Now I can't dangle a 170 player ranking in front of you without getting into the top 10, so let's dive right in. You'll see some goalies in here who aren't particularly known for being elite, but have just been consistently good enough to not have a bad year or years that sunk their overall total like Auntie Ranta. You'll see more familiar names of goalies who did have pretty noticeable drop-offs, but at least their highs earlier in their careers kept them afloat easily. You'll see goalies who were world stoppers for a few years, and then just disappeared before they had a chance to regress to the mean. And then there's Yaro Holak who has just been around for so long and has been consistent enough through it that cumulatively he's saved more goals than every goalie in the NHL. Save one. And no one even comes close to him. He is, without question, the greatest goalie of the 21st century. Honestly, that could be the entire video. That's really all you need to know about Hank. He was around forever, and he was good forever. If you take all five three-year periods from the Advanced Stats era, Lundqvist has the highest cumulative goals saved above expected in three of them, which, not coincidentally, are the top three over any of these periods straight up. If each of these three-year periods were split into their own careers, they would each be good enough to rank 1st, 5th, and 4th. Somebody stop him. But enough of these broad strokes, let's look at the individual years. Of the usually 90 plus goalies that played a game in the NHL every year, let's look at where Hank ranks in goals saved above expected. 2nd, 1st, 1st, 3rd, 1st, 1st, 4th, 11th, 2nd, 62nd, 33rd, 70th, and 19th. Ignore those last four, the first decade is insane. In 07-08, he missed out on being first by less than half a goal. In 09-10, he was first place by 20. In 15-16, he was second place again by less than one. And, I mean, this is, this is splitting hairs. You saw the graph. You saw the rankings. This is ridiculous. Even at the end of his career, his worst seasons, he wasn't bad, just below average. That 62nd place season? He only let in about four more goals than he should have. The next year when he was 33rd, he basically broke even. His career with the goals saved above average metric is basically just as baller. I didn't bother to check the yearly rankings, but I guarantee you that nobody, nobody continually stayed at these soaring heights for as long or as consistently as Henrik Lundqvist did. Now I know what you're thinking, stop, stop, he's already dead, but no, I won't. This dude single waffle boardedly eliminated the Caps three times in four years. The world must know how good he was. Lundqvist was not only an absolute unit on the whole, but especially so against the very best that the NHL threw at him. Over the course of his career, from 2005 to 2020, the best teams in the NHL were the Sharks, Penguins, Capitals, Bruins, Predators, Ducks, Lightning, and Blues. This is how they did on the whole in that time span. This is how they did against Lundqvist. The best team's goal scoring and win percentage both cratered against Hank. The only ones that increased were the Bruins and Predators' win percentage. The Kings stared down the best talent the NHL could throw at him and turned them into the 2012 Dallas Stars. What did they do? Nothing. But that's the point. When faced with Lundqvist, the best became pedestrian. Digging even further, we can look at how the best individual shooters of this era fared against him. These are the top 10 highest goal scorers during his playing career. Of all of them, only the god-chosen Penguins are level with their goal scoring rate. Now, this is all well and good, but what about the playoffs? Well, his legend continues on, really. Lundqvist played in 130 playoff games. To give you an idea of the respect that that figure demands, we have to scope way out. In the entire modern era, there are only 10 goaltenders to have played that many games in the playoffs. Ranked by their save percentage in those games, they are Andy Moog, Mike Vernon, Grant Fuhr, Billy Smith, Marc-Andre Fleury, 
Cujo, Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur, Eddie the Eagle Belfour, and the inimitable Henrik Lundqvist. This could be another chart that is the sole focus of a video. Look at these names that he's with. I mean, nobody's ever going to be Wa or Brodeur or Hasek if he had played enough to make this list, but Lundqvist manages to beat out the most respectable goalies of all time in the most foundational statistic their position has in the most important time of the season. That is stupendous. There's another groovy, only slightly less important category that Hank beats the others out in, though. Henrik Lundqvist finished top 10 in Vesna voting for a full decade straight up, never finishing lower than 6th. Since the voting system began, no other goalie has been a top 10 vote for that long except Martin Brodeur. I don't think anybody's touching 14 years, though. Now we get to the crimes. The unforgivable, tragic crimes levied against Henrik Lundqvist by apparently God himself. Throughout all of his illustrious career, he was only an all-star twice. Of those 10 years as a Vesna hopeful, Hank won a grand total of one time. And the very silver, very Canadian elephant in the room, Henrik Lundqvist, never won a Stanley Cup. Despite being unquestionably one of the greatest goalies of his generation and the best post-lockout, Lundqvist's repertoire is missing the crowning silver jewel that outweighs literally every other trophy he could have earned. At age 23 in the first year after the lockout, Lundqvist was tentatively given the starter's role after tearing it up in Sweden for the last three years with an Anton Cup win and several individual honors from 2005, and he lived up to expectations, putting up sparkling numbers in 53 games. However, his 100-point team would fall apart in the playoffs, swept by the Devils. Despite this upsetting defeat, he was 9th in MVP voting, 4th in Rookie of the Year, and 3rd place as the best goaltender in the league. Greatness starts early. Lundqvist had a very minor sophomore slump in 06-07, and was still good enough to be 3rd in Vesna voting again, and did really well in the playoffs, winning his first series against the hapless Atlanta Thrashers. In 07-08, the Kings boxcar stats continued to dip in both the regular and postseason, but remember, this is the season where he saved more goals than any goalie should have, save one. And the Vesna voters knew it too, giving him the obligatory third place. The Rangers, again a contending playoff team, saw Lundqvist's numbers jump back up alongside reaching the summit of advanced stats. In the playoffs, the Rangers would face the Capitals and, believe it or not, they lost by one goal from another legend who may get his own video one day. And so, the Vesna sleezes punished him by giving him only 6th place. 2010 saw the Rangers fall out of playoff contention, despite Lundqvist still leading the field by a country mile and seeing his basic numbers jump up again. But nah, he's the 6th best goalie in the league. And get this, on March 25th, the year of our lord 2010, Henrik Lundqvist won his 30th game of the season against the New Jersey Devils. He had won at least 30 games in each of his first five seasons in the NHL. Of the 832 goalies that have played five seasons in the NHL, not a single one has done this, aside from the King. Lundqvist put up another ho-hum amazing season in 2011, rewarded, naturally, with another Vesna snub, and a loss in five games to the Capitals, despite playing really well. And then, Lundqvist somehow found another gear. The 109-point Rangers rode on the back of Lundqvist's career-best performance, putting up an absolutely ridiculous 930 save percentage and sub-2 goals against average. And God smiled on him that year, along with the Vesna win, he was somehow just as world-beating in the playoffs, though New York fell just short to arch-rival New Jersey that year in the Eastern Conference Finals. Henrik Lundqvist simply does not understand the concept of defeat, so he did the same thing again the next year. But unless you're Dominic Hasek or a Pittsburgh Penguin, people don't like giving you the same award twice in a row, so he got snubbed, despite being first in GSAX again. And again, he would shut out my Capitals in Game 7 and move on, once again playing out of his mind in the playoffs, without the rest of the team matching that effort. 
Another great season, another top 10 Vesna standing, and another goaded effort that went to the Stanley Cup Finals. But not back. Statistically, Hank did the second best against the Kings in the final than he did anyone else. But again, he was just on the wrong side of history. 2015, Hank was awesome, top 10 Vesna vote, deep playoff run off of his back that went nowhere. Okay, the fact that I am flippant about the consistency of a truly elite, world-beating goaltender shows how spoiled we are, how spoiled the Rangers were, to experience this man's career. And if you have a heart, how crushing it was that he still couldn't get his name engraved on the cup. In the playoffs, the Rags crushed the Penguins. Then, in the second round, they played Braden Holtby and the Capitals, and buddy, there might be a playoffs past episode here because this was, I think, the greatest goaltending duel I have ever seen and maybe one of the best playoff series of all time. All seven games were one goal games, one of only two series ever to that point to do so. But that last game went Lundquist and the Rangers way. In the last three game sevens against Washington, Hank had a goals against average of 0.63 and a save percentage of 979. And of course, he won all of them. Google actually defines this as cruel and violent treatment of a person or animal. I can talk about it now only because I have no more tears to shed. In the voluptuous burger of Capitals Boogeymen, Lundqvist is the juiced up patty sandwiched between Penguin's mini dynasties. That's how good he was. Now we start to get into the twilight of his career. At 33, Lundqvist was slowing down. Just kidding, he was second place in GSAX and got a top 20 heart nod. But not a top 10 Vesna consideration? Who votes on this crap? The Rangers lost to the eventual cup champion Penguins, there's the top bun, and would start to see, at long, long last, a downturn in Lundquist's incredible play. These are not bad numbers by any means. The worst of them are just average. But by the time the 2019-20 season rolled around, there was a new arm in the bullpen, who outshined even the brightest light on Broadway. Heading into free agency, Lundquist signed with- Oh my god, the Capitals! You have no- I burped. I have- you have no idea how excited I was for this. Even if he was just serviceable at this point in his career, most of Capitals Nation, and especially so the players, had such a great respect for him as both an athlete and as a classy human being. However, Lundquist would be robbed of one last heyday. A heart condition and subsequent surgery kept him out of the 2021 season and eventually would end his career. A career that, while perhaps unfulfilling in the most empirical sense, and beset by bad luck and unrequited reward for his supremacy, is still the greatest and most legendary of the 21st century, and one of the greatest of all time. The so-called top is a kind of liminal space, where some teams or players hover close to for a few years before the inevitable cycle of defeat comes around for them. Sometimes they make it back there sooner, sometimes they make it back later. But almost never is any one team ever sharing company at the top. It's a place that isn't. If you are there, then by definition you have either just arrived or are just passing through. It's not a place where anyone is meant to stay, unless you are the king on top of his throne. The story of Henrik Lundqvist is in some ways full of victory and domination and glory, but in one very large sense it is also a tragedy. A king who gave absolutely everything he could for his kingdom and was not rewarded with a crown.
for God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the deaths of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping killed, all murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court.